Hey everyone, this is Ben from Roto Gold, bringing you another video draft. I got a lot of feedback from the first one, uh, mainly that it was too long. Um, so this time I will be cutting out the time in between picks, so you get just the good stuff and less of my rambling. Uh, this is a Yahoo $20 Pro Rotisserie League. So we're looking to build a, a balanced lineup, and uh, hopefully the, the money on the line will help keep people honest. We got placed in the sixth slot, as you can see at the top there. Uh, which isn't exactly prime position. There, there's definitely a clear top five this year with Durant, LeBron, Chris Paul, Stephen Curry, and James Harden leading the way. After that, it gets a bit murky. Um, we do have Kevin Love slated as our sixth best player, uh, and for a very good reason. Um, he's definitely a borderline top five player when he's healthy, and, and we expect him to return to that form this year. Um, there, there's a lot of debate as to whether or not you should pick someone who's, who's such a risk this early. Um, I'm on the side that you should, just because trying to compete with someone like Kevin Durant or LeBron, um, you need to have the high upside, even if it comes with some risk. Um, hopefully he'll stay healthy throughout the course of the season, and if he does, he'll definitely be an absolute monster in the rebounds category. Um, we'll go ahead and you'll see the countdown come up here, and then we'll go ahead and cut to the first round um, it'll stay that way throughout it so here we are uh, it comes approaching and as you can see the the top four guys selected were as planned and the fifth uh, Stephen Curry comes off the board as well um, I, I can't say enough about Kevin Love I'm definitely excited to get him as a starting point he'll, he'll dominate those rebounds contribute in points and even chip in some threes from the center position which uh, definitely can't complain about that uh, here we'll jump ahead to the second round. All right, so throughout these rounds, um, I'll go ahead and queue up the people that I'm considering, just so you can see who who I'm looking over. Um, as this is approaching, I am crossing my fingers that Anthony Davis can fall on my lap. He has been a monster this preseason, and amazingly enough, he does. Uh, it's tempting to take a point guard here, um, just because having two big men isn't exactly how you want to start all the time, but I definitely can't pass up the upside that comes with Anthony Davis. He, he could very well be a top 10, if not a better than that player. He is definitely ready to make the leap. All right, so here we are in the third round. Um, a lot of good players have come off the board. Uh, you'll be able to check that in the bottom right corner. Um, here, we don't want to take another big man, even though there are some very good options. Um, we, we just need to come out of one of these first three rounds with a point guard. It's pretty critical this year just because there are a lot of point guards, but uh, the quality starts to drop off pretty severely. I'm more than happy to take Ty Lawson here. It's, he's got some worries just because there's a lot of point guard talent now in Denver, but I have faith that they've got a lot invested in Ty, and, and he'll continue to perform the way he has. So now we've got a pretty good foundation here, um, guys who contribute in pretty much every category that we need them to. All right, as the fourth round selection comes here. Uh, I am absolutely floored by the fact that Pau Gasol is still on the board. Um, Kobe might not be out for very long, but I, I just think that Pau is going to have a renaissance year for uh, his stats. He definitely performs better as the power forward, and having Chris Kamen in town should free up some room for him uh, to move around in that position. Last year was an anomaly. Um, having Dwight in town really screwed up just about everything. And really, Pau shouldn't escape the second round. So while I don't really want tons of big men, I am not going to pass up the chance to take this much value. All right, so here we are in the fifth round. Uh, I got a little caught off guard. A lot of the picks that I was hoping to make, mainly Jonas V and Monte Ellis, um, even Drew Holiday, all kind of came off the board just before me. That, that's going to happen to all of us. Um, you hate it when you do, but... I go ahead and queue up these guys. Um, I, I would like to come out of this round with an, another point guard. I've got more than enough big men, and while Thaddeus Young might be the best overall player, I, I don't want to have to deal with the free throw percentage hit just yet. Um, I, I don't really have anyone to help bolster that. Um, so I'll, I'll go ahead and kind of narrow it down to Jeff T or Golan Dragic, and at the end of the day, I, I'm going to prefer Dragic just because I think he's a much more talented player. He might not have a better supporting cast, and people are worried about Bledsoe being in town, but I definitely think that he'll he'll shine there. Uh, he, remember, he was a top three-round pick last year. 
All right, so for this pick, um, it came down to mainly Kyle Lowry, George Hill, and Amir Johnson. Amir might be a better player, but again, I have a lot of big men. Um, I, I was really eyeing Bradley Beal, but he came off the board just before me again, uh, getting a little bad luck after getting such good luck with Davis and Gasol. Um, I'm going to go ahead and side with Lowry here. He's got a much better supporting cast this year, so hopefully that will help increase his field goal percentage and keep assisting at such a high level. So this pick will probably get the most you're a hypocrite calls, um, but you know I've been harping on the fact that I don't need another big man with how, how good, um, how quality the big men we picked up early were. Um, now we've got our guards really set. Probably should be addressing the uh, shallow shooting guard or small forward positions, but I think there's a lot of good values to come later on. Um, the guy who really jumps off the board here is Enos Cantor there at the top. Um, he's, he's just got so much potential. A, a really, really solid athlete. Um, just really unseen because of the fact that he was pretty much suspended all throughout college and uh, hasn't been able to shine in Utah yet because there were so many good big men last year. Um, Derek Favors will probably get more love this year and, and probably deservedly, given how much he's getting paid now. Um, but Enos Cantor has the chance to really succeed this year, and, and I'm more than happy to take him. Uh, in the seventh round, which is pretty good value. Okay, so at this point, we've got a very solid foundation for our team. Um, we've got all the big men categories uh, pretty well covered. A little little weak in blocks, but I think uh, Davis and Cantor can take big steps forward in those. Um, the main categories that we need to address are three-pointers and steals. Thankfully, we're looking at shooting guards and small forwards pretty much from here on out. Um, those positions are very well equipped to handle those two categories. Um, I've got a few guys highlighted there on the right. What I'd really like to do here is be able to take someone high upside like a uh, DeMar DeRozan or even a J.R. Smith, just hoping that he can kind of blow him on Shumpert out of the way, um, and then hope to wheel or have Danny Green just come back around the table. Um, this will probably get a little bit more... Uh, Black, but I'm, I'm going to go ahead and side with J.R. Smith here. He was out of his mind last year, and I really don't see the competition being that bad for him. I think he can repeat. So it probably stands to reason that I should have picked Danny Green in that last one since he came off the board just after us. A bit of a boneheaded move on my part, but I think we can definitely still fill, the, fill those spots. Um, what I'd like to do here is be able to pick up a really solid shooting guard or small forward and then be able to take Eric Gordon coming back around. Um, that's probably a pipe dream as well, but I'm going to go ahead and side with DeMar DeRozan here. He's an incredible scorer, uh, amazing athlete, and now he's got a lot more weapons around him. Um, so hopefully it'll free, free up some more space for him to not have to jack up so many shots. He'll be able to, to really score efficiently. Um, I really like that pick. It'll be fun to watch throughout the year. So the pipe dream almost came true. Uh, Eric Gordon came off the board just before our pick. Um, at this point in the draft, I think one of my pet picks this year is going to be taking Reggie Jackson in the last uh, three or four rounds. Um, he might not have production all throughout the year, but he is going to be out of his mind for that first month. And I'd much rather take someone like that and pick up the next hot player once his, his job is gone than to try and fight through a year of Manu Ginobili slash Marcus Thornton kind of numbers. Um, he, he's going to be just out of control, and I, I would definitely recommend anyone taking him. Well, we might not need the assists and whatnot, but he'll be a major contributor for this first month. All right, so at this point, we're going to go ahead and try and round our round out our bench um, with some guys who can contribute in those stats that we were lacking, um, namely threes, steals, and blocks. Uh, in, in this round, I think we can really find some value in the threes and steals spot. However, DeAndre Jordan is je definitely someone to keep our eye on. Um, if his three, free throw percentage can actually improve, like uh, news from Clippers Town is, is saying, um, he could be a breakout star this year. Um, however, I'd much rather take a chance on a guy like Brandon Knight or Ben McLemore or Deion Waiters, just in the hope that they can put their, their shot together and, and contribute. Um, for this round, I'm going to go ahead and side with Brandon Knight, um, just because he's got a lot more opportunity now since he's the man out in Milwaukee. Um, 
and he, he showed last year that he can definitely uh, pour in some threes and steals. So uh, good pickup here, I think, to help round out those stats. And thankfully, uh, DeAndre Jordan does find his way back around. So he'll be a major contributor in blocks if we need it. Um, it's nice because you can keep him on the bench, and then if we need some sort of surge in uh, blocks, we'll be able to do that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and throw Martel Webster on the list too, um, just because I think we're going to need more steals and threes after this pick, and a guy like Martel can really, really fill in those numbers uh, now that he's got a major paycheck and a, a starting job. All right, so to round out this draft, you'll see me make a, a bit of a last-second gut decision. Um, I should have probably gone with Martel Webster. Instead, I went ahead and pulled the trigger on Thabo Cephalosha, um, just because I think there's a lot of potential there, given Russell Westbrook being out for a while, and now that Kevin Martin's out of town, he can really help with those threes and steals I was talking about without hurting elsewhere. Um, I think overall it was a very solid team, well-rounded. I'd love to hear your comments uh, either on the YouTube page or on Roto Gold. And if you'd like to see these, uh, more of these in the future, go ahead and reach on out. Um, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are. And if you'd like to sponsor, uh, there's also notes about that in the info. Um, overall, I think a, a good experience, and hopefully you guys enjoy this one more than my uh, one-hour-long rant. Bye.